So the reason I, I studied worship at IWS uh, is because I wanted to be able to apply it. That was the key for me, is I didn't want an academic degree per se. I wanted an opportunity to study worship, to be able to go home and be a better worship leader and uh, be a better minister. Um, and so that's what I learned at IWS. Uh, the teachers challenged me and sent me in ways that were uh, theoretical but yet practical. And, uh, and I learned a lot about... Um, the areas that I was interested in, which was number one, congregational worship participation. How do we get our congregations to really engage? Uh, I came from an evangelical background where everyone was really engaged, but now I was serving in a, uh, a mainline Protestant background, uh, Protestant environment where engagement may or may not be uh, something that you can witness. And I discovered that there are really three areas that uh, really have to be in place as a worship leader uh, to really get your congregation to engage. The first one is relational. Um, you have to be in a relationship with your congregation. If you're not uh, greeting them, if you're not telling them how glad you are that they're there, uh, taking them a coffee or uh, conversations or praying for them, uh, being in a relationship, no matter how large or small the congregation is, is a key uh, to being able to lead them. The second thing is passion. Um, you have to be able to demonstrate your passion. Even if you are a, a more reserved individual and you kind of hold your passion on the inside, people want to people wanna see uh, they will love what you love as you build that relationship. And so if you can demonstrate a love and a passion for worship uh, as they get to know you and develop that relationship with you, then your passion will, they'll, they'll hook into your passion and uh, they'll begin to look at worship through your eyes uh, and through your approach. And so then that IWS education really comes into play because now you're teaching them uh, a heart and a, a vision of worship uh, that you learned at IWS, but then takes them into into a new level. Um, and then the last thing for congregational engagement, uh, a congregational worship is engagement. Um, actually engaging in the worship act. Um, so many uh, people will talk about worship that's invitational, but invitation is not enough. You can stand up there on the platform and say, y'all worship with me as much as you like. But if you're not actually offering the opportunity to engage, if you're not offering some instruction, if you're not um, giving some guidance, being a mentor, uh, uh, like a docent in a museum, you're not, you're not uh, opening uh, worship up for them and allowing them to enter into it, um, then, you're not, then they're not really uh, able to participate to the level that you would hope that they would participate. Uh, I don't want them just singing. I want them to uh, embrace the lyric. I want them to uh, bring the lyric in and, and chew on it and, and offer it to God in that way. So relationship um, uh, is, is really important. Uh, passion is very important. And then that, that opportunity to engage, not just invite. Uh, those are the three aspects um, that I bring into congregational worship participation, but those are things that I learned at IWS. Um, this was a place where my professors uh, challenged me to go beyond just what was on a page uh, and bring it in and apply it and, and use it. And then I've been able to take that uh, and put my own passion into it and, and my own heart uh, and find my own way uh, with that ministry. So uh, I, there's, a, an old, there's a saying that goes around at IWS that IWS ruins you. Uh, and I will tell you that that's, a, that's really kind of the case for us, is that, or for me in, in particular, that um, IWS changed me, and I could never do worship uh, and never lead worship the same way uh, ever again.